Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and welcome to the Real Talk. I hope you're all happy, healthy, and safe. And uh, if you're new to the channel, this is a platform for open-minded individuals to come together, share ideas, share experiences, so that we can learn from each other and hopefully make this world a little bit better and a little more educated. And uh, it's been a while; we haven't put out a video, but we are back, and we are back with a new guest. Or it's a great pleasure of having you on. How are you doing, man? Uh, thank you very much. I'm doing well. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. I'm excited and uh, looking forward to it. And thank you for having me. Of course, it's my pleasure. And yeah, looking forward to this conversation. So before we get into the conversation, um, maybe you can share just a little bit about yourself to the viewers, uh, just to get to know you better, and then we'll deep dive into the conversation. So uh, my name is uh, Or Eisenstadt. I am a uh, 34 year old. Um, at the end of the month, I'll be 35, but I'm still 34. And uh, I'm uh, Israeli. I uh, was uh, born and raised in Israel. Um, and in the last 11 years, I've been living abroad. Um, seven years in South Africa, two years in uh, the Netherlands, in Amsterdam. And now uh, two years in Luxembourg. Um, I'm uh, self-employed in retail. I have uh, shops of cosmetics. And um, one of my, um, let's say, uh, things that, uh, uh, the reason that we are here also to, to talk and the main topic, uh, I think that uh, my, uh, uh, experienced, uh, uh, my experience as a gay man coming out Mm -hmm. um, which, inf which I, I can definitely say um, influenced me the most about okay. who I am, how I live my life, etc. That's brilliant. Thank you for that introduction. And, and that's why we want to speak about because even though we currently live in societies that are very accepting to gay men, and um, there are cultures and societies and countries and places out there that still have the old school thinking and that stigma attached that being gay is, is a choice, you know? Um, I've heard this before and of course that's not true. It's not, it's who you are, it's a part of who you are. And I want you to share that so that if, if there are viewers out there who still believe that, and then through your experience, hopefully we can change a few minds. And if there are other gay men out there who are still scared of coming out or scared or, or living in fear, then hopefully through your experience, they can get that courage. So let's start from the beginning. So like at what age, I'll ask you in this, in a two part question. So at what age did you first realize that, you know, you were attracted to men? And how did you feel at that point? If you can remember, like, were you scared? Were you excited? Were you confused? So I think that um, uh, the first time that I, I let's say uh, uh, that when kids usually have their uh, um, attraction or sexual attraction to uh, um, at a certain age, it usually comes at the age of, let's say, 11 or 12, mm -hmm. something like this, or 10 or 11. F for me, that is not where the story begins. And, and I'll, I'll elaborate on that. I believe that our perception in life about terms, about things, about uh, um, everything is, is being uh, built uh, in childhood. For example, my first introduction with the term uh, gay or lesbian mm -hmm. was uh, when I was younger, uh, when I was uh, six or seven year old, um, years old. And uh, my um, uh, older cousin, uh, which she, she's nine years older than me, I think that she was around 16. And she had been through the coming out process uh, um, uh, with her family. Okay. And, and that was the first time that I actually uh, met the, the term and understand what it is. And I saw and felt the shame and the um, um, anxiety and the fact that uh, um, my family wanted to hide it and uh, how it's being treated behind closed doors that gave me the first sense about not, not even about what it is, but that it's something that is forbidden, that needs to be ashamed of, that it's one of the worst thing that um, a person can basically be. And then uh, because of that experience, when it hit me uh, slowly and gradually at the age of 10, 11 or 12, 
uh, it was much more uh, painful. Why, why, why was that painful? Is that because you already knew the consequences that are going to happen? So you exactly. had that fear already in your head. Exactly. From, yeah. from my, my education, and when yeah. I say my education, it can be what I got from my parents, what I got from society, uh, uh, the perception that people had on, on gays at that time, yeah. which is worse than what it is now, but especially because that I had an experience like this uh, inside the family, then, then my, my view, my, my thoughts about what is gay and if it's good or bad was already there. Yeah. Um, so so that, that made my opinion on that uh, um, aspect of my life, of who I am, very difficult to handle, uh, oh, probably more difficult to handle than uh, uh, if that was not the case. So initially what I did is um, uh, try to ignore it. I try to deny it. I try to hide it because I, I sense that as, as, as I was growing older, uh, you become in 12, 13, 14, uh, you know, kids also start to uh, uh, talk and being interested in the uh, opposite sex. And I actually had to play along yeah. in order for, for people to not know. I mean, I was actually... And also you wanted to fit in, right? As a kid, you want to fit in. So exactly, there are certain exactly. things you do that you're not comfortable with just to fit in the society. And I'm assuming that's the same case with you. Exactly. And I really think that um, kids at a certain age, at most of their age, like you're looking how to fit in, you're looking how to be like everyone. You don't want to be different. Uh, at a later stage in life, uh, if you embrace uh, the difference inside you, then you understand how special it is and, and, and you know, you, you, you actually learn to love it. But that comes 100%. At, a, later. at a much later stage, yeah. yes. I, I started having these um, crazy thoughts back at the time. Um, for example, when, when it started to become bigger in my mind and, and emotion-wise and sexual attraction-wise, um, I said to myself, I remember uh, like at the age of 15 or 16, when I first told to one of my uh, girlfriends that, uh, you know, I'm going to live abroad and no one will know. And I would yeah. just, you know, mind my own business, like, like looking how I can still continue to hide it without confronting my family or the society about it or me without, yeah. without co co confronting me about it. Um, myself about it and um, so it became more painful and more painful uh, as I was going older because you know there, there comes a certain age when uh, um, it's more difficult to hide yeah and and also the the need and and that aspect in life gets mu much more volume um, yeah so that was let's say uh, uh, I was also one of my defense mechanism or one of the ways that I coped was uh, I was compensating with eating. I was uh, uh, at a very high, high weight. I finished high, high school at like 110 or 115 kg. Wow. Uh, and uh, the moment that I could not have it anymore, that I, I, I needed to basically throw it up and to tell my family was the first time that I actually had the... Um, emotions for um, one of my best friends in the army. Yeah. I was uh, 18, 19. And when that happened, I, I remember the day it happened. Uh, it was like a, like a light and lighting um, hitting me. And um, I remember saying to myself that, you know, that is something that I cannot fake. If yeah. it's something that strong, if this is like, you know, what it means to have a crush on someone or, or, to be infatuated with someone or to have feelings for someone, that is something that I cannot fake and I yeah. cannot feel like this uh, towards a woman. So eventually that very difficult place led me to explode and uh, say it. So who did you come out to first? I'm assuming obviously your family were not the first people you came out to. Uh, and what age did you like tell people about it? Maybe your friends or your cousins or someone? Um, two cousins uh, that also uh, one of them is gay uh, and actually the other one is also gay. 
Uh, but they had they also came, come out came at a later stage. Oh, okay, 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 okay. It runs in the family, as you can see. <laughs> yes. uh, no, but they but they are actually a, a step ex step cousins. But anyhow, it's a long story. Yeah. Um, so at the age of like 13, 14, mm-hmm. we started talking about it. I, I I was really reluctant to talk about it. I, I didn't even I wasn't really ready to engage in any kind of conversation about it. At in high school, late stages of high school. I started telling some girlfriends of mine and gra- gradually started started to feel better about it. And then when I had this, uh, these feelings for, 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 for my friend in the army, I just couldn't hold it anymore. And I uh, told my, um, my, uh, my mother first and then my father. And do you want to share that, those reactions? Because it's always interesting, like, <sighs> especially coming out to your to your parents, you know, because you do hold their opinions and beliefs in value. So it, it can be a bit challenging to, to say something that goes against their belief, I'm assuming here, because we've had this conversation before. So how was their yes. reaction? And um, yeah. So what, so what happened is that um, uh, my mom's reaction was uh, kind of harsh. Not in a way that someone, for example, kicked me out or yeah. told me that, uh, like, you know, I'm not accepted, but it wasn't at the time, it was not something that she could uh, understand or accept. She felt a lot of shame about it. My biggest fear of telling my parents was upsetting them, making them feeling uh, feel uh, uh, bad about it, making them ashamed of me. Uh, and, and, and it kind of, you know, happened. Um, she forced me to tell my father at the same day. Yeah. Uh, she, she told, when, when, she, when she asked me to tell him because she cannot keep it to herself, she told yeah. me, like, but don't, don't worry because he's gonna react better than, than uh, um, I just did. So I, I kind of, um, over the years, I learned to to accept it, even as um, like uh, um, her in, her intentions were good. Good, yeah. And she did it. Um, my my father accepted it again, better. But what happened since then, from the age of nineteen to the age of twenty eight, there was complete avoidance from the topic. Yeah. Um, yeah. which which that basically meant that yes, I mean. I said it, I told you that I was gay, uh, but we never really talked about it or, or allowed it to be inside the family. Mm. And uh, these, these nine years, um, on top of the pain and suffering that I experienced up until then, has really had a critical effect on, uh, on me, the way that I live my life. Um, yeah. The choice, the choices I've made, even even after coming out, the process uh, is actually, in my opinion, and I'm saying it, almost 16 years after coming out, it it never ends. It will always be part of my story. Mm-hmm. And um, if we are talking about uh, how how to bring people uh, closer to to the topic, understand it better, making it. Um, less taboo or, yeah. or uh, uh, more acceptable, more accepted. Um, the the fundamental fundamental thing that needs to happen is that that we will agree that it will be a topic that needs to talk about. That we will agree um, as a society as well, even if it's difficult to talk about, we will talk about it, and. Um, that you know, at the end of the day, it's it's to to doubt that or to disqualify someone because of that. It's it's uh, in my experience, it's the worst discrimination. Yeah. And uh, that. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and we as a society tend to do that a lot, right? Because just by someone's appearance or where they're from or their sexuality, we straight away make assumptions that this person will be like this, this, and this. And that is why, like, 
this is the why I started this channel because I want people like yourself, people going through other issues in their life, getting discriminated for other reasons, to come out and share their point of view, so that people out there can see like these people. We are all different, but we are all humans. You know, we all need to be treated the same way, and. just because of your sexuality or your race or your origin you you shouldn't be discriminated and while we are on the topic of discriminations and and like you're you're a well traveled man you've lived in many countries so i'm sure <clears throat> you must have had at some point did you have any experiences where you faced that discrimination uh where you faced that stigma uh, you don't have to go into details but anything you can shed or um where you felt that i'm being discriminated because i'm a gay man i am i am fortunate enough to to not be in a situation that is uh, let's say too hectic i was not i cannot really say that i was discriminated or for example that i did not get a certain job that i wanted yeah. or that i was not accepted uh, uh, in in a certain circle of of fr- uh, friends or people or something yeah. like that but but and and this is coming from someone that le- that let's say had kind of a mild outer experience with being gay mm. if we as humans are are um pushing and wanting to achieve equality we have to remember that um i can tell you that the the emotional the psychological effect um that it had the whole coming out process the whole perception that i got as a child uh, uh, um my my false self beliefs about what it is uh, um to be gay is it good is it bad uh for example uh, uh, i i grew up um thinking that i am damaged that there is something right. like the word damaged is 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 engraved in my in my uh, um mind and uh, that had a critical effect on my life even without being discriminated uh, um not getting a job or being uh, uh, persecuted or whatever because everything that happened in my life that fitted into this this mold or, or pattern that i'm damaged then then it just it just uh, um, made made the um, scratches on my uh, heart or on my soul uh, um deeper and deeper it's something that until you don't actually take care of this inner uh, yeah. uh, wounds it's something that stays with you so so to your to your question i think that what is important to remember is is that all of us as humans you know what is like what is our a, a most common thing that i i i feel and i believe our emotions we all know how joy feels and looks like yeah. we all know how fear feels and look like we all know how how a, a pain feels and look like and and we all we all want to have the sense of belonging and that means that it doesn't matter from what is our starting point or who we are we have the same desire as humans we have the same yeah. needs we have the same human needs and that should be in the front line that yeah. should be what matters and um if we're talking about also changing perceptions it's it start with with um our opinion as adults nowadays uh, uh about the the term and what is is being gay means basically um and if that change in the education that mm. we will also teach our children but also as a society uh, for example allow gay marriage in like in some countries they do acceptance and right along the way. it's acceptance. acceptance yes yes and yes. and you well, you or whatever you've said you are so right and i really really appreciate you sharing that because that's exactly how i feel and <clears throat> it's funny many people come on here it doesn't matter what we're talking about it all comes down to the way the society is built right and the way they have all these perceptions about things and how you should be and should not be and like you said that as a child it stays with you and it carries through your life and then you're already on the backhand when you start growing up because now you have to work on something which you shouldn't be 
because it should be normal. So you are already one step back. And now you have to make sure that, like you mentioned, all those other emotions that you experienced throughout your life, together with your, your beliefs from your, your core beliefs or your, your child beliefs, what you grew up as a child with, they all accumulate. And then you have all this pressure. And then society tells you, oh, you have to be strong. You can't be vulnerable. No, you have to let those emotions flow. You, you need an outlet. But my point is that we need to build or we need to hopefully hope for a better society where you don't have that back foot. So when you start off as a kid, you're loved, accepted for who you are. And then, yes, you'll have up and down in life, but you'll be in such a strong, good position to handle it. And you don't have to then work on underlying issues because you don't have them because you've already been given that love and acceptance. Exactly. So you, you are 100% right. And, and it's, it's so nice to hear this from so many different people because I feel like more and more people are becoming open to this as we go along. And hopefully the next generation can take even one step further and they, they won't have any of these issues. And education plays, like you mentioned, a big part of it. This, not only from school, but it has to be your education is all around you, from your parents, your family, your friends, your society. So, yeah. So now uh, just maybe as a final question, and if you'd like to add anything extra to it, please go ahead. You being a gay man in, 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 in this society, let's just call it, this journey you've been on, what have you learned? What are the main things you've learned just about yourself about anything in general and like so you can share with other people and maybe they can take a thing or two from it i wish that i could uh, um, rush for others the process that i've been through some people uh, some some guys have it uh, um, more difficult and and some guys have it easier basically mm -hmm. uh, depends on their surroundings and 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 also who they are and what they they've uh, uh, they got as children um first of all you have to be brave you have to be brave and when i say have to be brave uh, we cannot push ourselves to a place that we are not ready to be yet but bravery is is not the lack of um, fear and discomfort and uh, uh, helplessness and all of these uncomfortable feelings, it's their presence. It's their presence. Mm -hmm. It's actually to allow them to be. Uh, avoidance, which is, uh, let's say, the, the, the main thing that I, I uh, um, suffered because of, um, is, is something that it's, it's like looking at the other way, it's not going to make it uh, um, disappear. Who we are, that fundamental part of who we are, we deserve to be happy. And uh, also um, just to do the best we can to be kind to ourselves, to be kind to ourselves because, because the, the, the closest relationship at the end of the day that we all of, like all of us have, are the one that we have with, with ourselves. Mm -hmm. And we spend so much time in our thoughts and in our mind. And uh, it sounds like a cliche, but, 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 but we, we, we might as well make it a decent place uh, that it's nice to be at. And just to be kind to, to, to ourselves and show compassion as well. And also, also, as children, I know that I blamed myself a lot. Mm for being who I am, for making certain choices, and um, especially as children, it's not like we are dependent on our, dependent on our uh, environment for survival. We have to do what we have to do to survive also psychologically. Yeah. Um, so it's something really important to also acknowledge and not to judge yourself for it and to, and to do it with baby step. Steps and if I can say one, of one course. last thing that um, I remember that I, I started this uh, life training uh, um, uh, uh, course and, and sessions about a year and a half ago, and initially it was very difficult. And on the third month, when I was basically uh, um, 
starting to to lose it because it was it was very difficult to acknowledge cer certain things. I remember that um, my therapist asked me if if I ask you what do you think about the sixteen year old boy that you were. Hmm. I said that I think that he was weak and he was a coward. He mm. is a coward, he is weak. Um, and I said a lot of nasty things. Negative, yeah. A lot of negative things. Yeah. And she told me, I wish for you that one day you will be able to give a hug to that kid that anything that happened uh, wasn't his fault and he just did the best he could at the same time. And that is something that actually was a revolution for me. Yeah. And yeah. it started there. So so just to be kind to ourselves and also to who we were and, and to uh, show compassion towards ourselves. Uh, that's So I, I think that's a great way to end because it's beautiful. And again, thank you so much all for coming on. And uh, you're welcome anytime back. I know you have gone through a a lot of experiences and I would love to have you back and we can talk about something else and you're doing your life coaching course and I know you're going to learn a lot of things which and you've learned a lot of things already so you can bring that all to the table to the channel and share it with our viewers so thank you so much for coming on or and sharing this experience you're welcome and thank you uh, for having me and it was a pleasure and uh, I'll see you soon yes thank you viewers for staying tuned and um if you would like to come on and share your ideas, your experiences, then uh, get in touch with us. All our information is in the description below and like, share, subscribe, and um, we will we'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye.